In the history of philosopher, there are luminaries whose intellectual contributions have left an indelible mark on the tapestry of human thought. Today, we embark on a journey through the captivating life of a philosopher whose wisdom and engaging storytelling forever changed the way we perceive the world. Welcome to a tale of George Edward Moore, the philosopher with a twinkle in his eye. Once upon a time, in the hallowed halls of Oxford University, there lived a philosopher whose name echoed through the centuries like a whispered secret, George Edward Moore. But unlike many philosophers of his time, Moore was not a stern, stern-faced man lost in the labyrinth of abstract thoughts. No, he was a man with a twinkle in his eye and a curiosity that knew no bounds. It was a chilly afternoon in the heart of Oxford, and Moore found himself strolling through the famous botanic gardens. His footsteps crunched on the gravel path, and the brittle leaves whispered secrets as the wind rustled through the ancient trees. Moore was known for his love of nature, which he believed held the key to many of life's profound questions. As he wandered, he happened upon a solitary gardener tending to a vibrant bed of roses. The gardener, a wizened man with gnarled hands, noticed Moore's contemplative demeanor and decided to strike up a conversation. Beautiful, aren't they? He remarked, his eyes fixed on the roses. Moore, always eager for a good chat, smiled and replied, Indeed, my good sir, they are quite beautiful. But how do you know they're beautiful? The gardener, taken aback by the philosopher's question, pondered for a moment and replied indeed, my good sir, they are quite beautiful. But how do you know they're beautiful? Moore's eyes sparkled with delight. Ah, you see, my dear gardener, you've just helped me illustrate a point I've long wanted to make. He reached into his coat pocket and pulled out a shiny silver coin. You see this coin, don't you? He asked. The gardener nodded. Moore continued, Ah, you see, my dear gardener, you've just helped me illustrate a point I've long wanted to make. Again, the gardener nodded. Moore held the coin up to the sunlight and exclaimed, But how do we know it's silver? Just as you see the beauty of these roses, we perceive the silverness of this coin. It's something we intuitively know, a common sense, belief, if you will. The gardener, now fully engaged in the conversation, couldn't help but smile. So, you're saying that our knowledge of the world is built on these simple, common-sense observations? Exactly. Moore replied with enthusiasm. Our everyday knowledge is grounded in these common-sense ideas, and they form the foundation of our philosophical understanding. It's like the bricks of a grand cathedral, each one vital to the structure. The gardener nodded, his understanding deepening, and he went back to tending the roses with a newfound appreciation for the philosopher's wisdom. And so, as George Edward Moore continued his journey through the world of philosophy, he taught us to appreciate the beauty and common sense, reminding us that sometimes the most profound insights can be found in the simplest of observations, just like the beauty of a rose in a garden or the silver shine of a coin in the sunlight. And his philosophy, like those roses in the botanic gardens, bloomed for generations to come, captivating the minds and hearts of those who sought to unravel the mysteries of life and knowledge. Moore's life was a testament to his unwavering dedication to philosophy and his love for the pursuit of truth. One of his most famous contributions to philosophy was the notion of common-sense realism. He argued that we can trust our everyday, commonsensical beliefs about the world, and that the burden of proof should rest on those who challenge these beliefs. In other words, if something seems evident and straightforward, we should accept it until we have good reason to doubt it. As Moore delved deeper into the realms of philosophy, he became known for his engaging teaching style. His students eagerly gathered in his lectures, where he would challenge them with thought-provoking questions and encourage them to explore their own ideas. Moore was a master of the Socratic method, leading his students through a maze of questions to help them discover the clarity of thought and the foundations of their own beliefs. One sunny day in his seminar room, Moore presented his students with a riddle that would become legendary in philosophical circles. He held up one hand and asked, Tell me, class, how do I know that I have a hand? His students puzzled over this seemingly simple question. They began to offer complex answers involving scientific methods and empirical evidence. But Moore just smiled and said, You're overthinking it. The answer is that I know I have a hand simply by looking at it. My knowledge is grounded in the immediate and undeniable evidence of my senses. And that, my dear students, is the power of common sense. 
His students left that class with a renewed appreciation for the simplicity and power of common sense, and Moore's reputation as a master of philosophical inquiry only grew. Throughout his career, George Edward Moore engaged in debates with some of the greatest minds of his time, including his friend and fellow philosopher, Bertrand Russell. Their discussions about the nature of reality, ethics, and knowledge pushed the boundaries of human understanding. Moore's clear and persuasive arguments made him a force to be reckoned with in the world of philosophy. As the years passed, Moore's legacy continued to thrive, and his ideas inspired countless philosophers and thinkers. He was not just a philosopher but a storyteller of the profound truths hidden in plain sight. His writings, lectures, and ideas captivated the audience of the world, reminding them that sometimes, the most captivating and enlightening stories can be found in the quiet corners of common sense. And so, the legacy of George Edward Moore, the philosopher with a twinkle in his eye and a profound love for common sense, lives on, forever engaging and captivating those who seek to explore the mysteries of the human mind and the world around us. In his quest for deeper understanding, Moore embarked on a series of journeys that would take him far from the familiar streets of Oxford. One of his most memorable travels led him to the exotic landscapes of India. Moore was fascinated by the rich tapestry of Eastern philosophy, and he wanted to immerse himself in its profound wisdom. He arrived in the bustling city of Varanasi, where the Ganges River flowed like a silver ribbon through the ancient streets. Moore wandered through the labyrinthine alleys, engaging in conversations with scholars and holy men. His insatiable curiosity led him to the ashrams of spiritual gurus and the tranquil sanctuaries where seekers of truth sought enlightenment. Moore's experiences in India profoundly impacted his philosophical outlook. He embraced the concept of perceptual relativity, the idea that our understanding of reality is shaped by our cultural and perceptual context. He saw the world in a new light, realizing that what may seem like common sense in one culture might be completely different in another. Upon returning to England, Moore incorporated the lessons from his journey into his philosophical work. He recognized the importance of cultural perspectives and the diversity of human experience. This deepened his commitment to understanding the nature of truth and knowledge, making his philosophical inquiries even more captivating and relevant. As he continued to explore the intricacies of epistemology, ethics, and metaphysics, Moore also became an advocate for peace and social justice. His insights into the foundations of morality led him to speak out against war and injustice, and he used his intellectual prowess to influence public opinion and advocate for a more ethical society. One of the most significant chapters in Moore's life unfolded during the tumultuous years of World War II. He played an active role in shaping public discourse, arguing passionately for a world founded on reason, compassion, and cooperation. His speeches and writings had a profound impact, inspiring individuals from all walks of life to work towards a more just and peaceful world. In the post-war era, Moore's influence reached even greater heights. His ideas laid the groundwork for modern analytical philosophy, and he became a revered figure in academic circles. The twinkle in his eye and the warmth of his engaging stories drew students from all over the world to Oxford, where they eagerly absorbed his wisdom and carried his legacy forward. As George Edward Moore's life journey continued, he remained a steadfast explorer of the human mind and the mysteries of existence. He will always be remembered as the philosopher who not only engaged with the profound questions of his time but also sought to bring about positive change in the world through his intellect and compassion. And so, George Edward Moore's story, full of intellectual curiosity, cultural exploration, and a dedication to the betterment of humanity, continues to captivate the hearts and minds of those who seek to understand the world and make it a more enlightened and compassionate place. In the twilight of his career, Moore's insatiable curiosity led him to delve into a realm that was close to his heart, the philosophy of ethics. He had always been a champion of clarity and precision in philosophical thinking, and he believed that ethical questions should be no exception. Moore's magnum opus, Principia Ethica, would become one of the most influential works in the field of ethics. In this groundbreaking text, Moore tackled questions of moral philosophy with a depth and clarity that had rarely been seen before. He was determined to unravel the complexities of right and wrong, good and bad, in a way that was intellectually rigorous yet accessible. One of the key concepts that emerged from Principia Ethica was Moore's theory of the naturalistic fallacy. He argued that it is erroneous to define moral terms such as good, 
in purely naturalistic or empirical terms. In other words, you can't simply equate good with any natural property, like pleasure or happiness, as many philosophers had attempted to do. Instead, good is a concept that stands on its own and cannot be reduced to anything else. Moore famously illustrated this concept using the example of a shade of yellow. He argued that when we say something is a certain shade of yellow, we aren't defining it in terms of something else, we're simply describing a property that is self-evident. Similarly, when we say something is good, it's not because it possesses any specific natural property. Good is a simple, indefinable quality. This groundbreaking work reshaped the landscape of ethics and challenged prevailing theories of his time. Moore's brilliance was in his ability to engage his audience, taking complex philosophical concepts and making them accessible through vivid examples and elegant prose. His engaging storytelling style made even the most abstract philosophical discussions feel like a captivating narrative. As Principia Ethica gained recognition and acclaim, Moore's influence on the field of ethics became immeasurable. His commitment to clarity, precision, and intellectual honesty shaped the way philosophers approached ethical questions for generations to come. His ideas transcended the ivory towers of academia and found their way into public discourse, sparking conversations about the nature of morality and the foundations of human values. In the twilight of his life, George Edward Moore remained a cherished and revered figure in the world of philosophy. His dedication to truth, his engagement with profound questions, and his commitment to making complex ideas accessible through engaging storytelling left an indelible mark on the philosophical landscape, captivating generations of thinkers and leaving a legacy that continues to inspire and enlighten those who seek to understand the mysteries of the human experience. Can you imagine a world where something is good, and yet it is not the case that it would be better if it were otherwise? This question may seem deceptively simple, but its implications were profound. Moore argued that when we encounter a statement like, X is good, it remains an open question, whether, is it true that X is good, can be answered definitively. In essence, Moore was challenging the idea that goodness could be reduced to any simpler concept or be analyzed away through other terms, such as happiness or pleasure. Is pleasure good? Remains open because it doesn't provide a satisfactory answer. This line of reasoning led to Moore's conclusion that the concept of goodness is irreducible and indefinable. It stands alone as a fundamental concept that cannot be analyzed in terms of anything else. This concept became the linchpin of his ethical philosophy, emphasizing the importance of moral intuition and the inherent complexity of ethical questions. Moore's open question argument revolutionized the field of ethics, pushing scholars and philosophers to grapple with the profound nature of moral concepts. It encouraged a more nuanced, reflective, and intuitive approach to ethical inquiries. As Moore's reputation as a philosopher of great insight and engaging storytelling continued to grow, he was sought after by academics and philosophers from around the world. He became an influential figure in the intellectual landscape of the 20th century, with his ideas leaving a lasting impact on the development of modern ethics. The engaging stories and intellectual clarity he brought to philosophical debates made him not only a respected thinker but also a beloved teacher. Moore's legacy as a philosopher who championed the importance of ethics, morality, and the enduring mysteries of goodness continues to captivate and inspire generations of thinkers, reminding us that the quest for truth is a journey filled with profound insights and engaging stories that illuminate the human experience. In his later years, George Edward Moore's influence on the world of philosophy grew exponentially. He found himself in the midst of a dynamic intellectual community, engaging with both established philosophers and young, eager minds. One of his most memorable encounters was with a young student named Alice. Alice was a brilliant and inquisitive scholar, known for her tenacity and ability to pose challenging questions. One day, she approached Moore with a question that would forever change the landscape of philosophical discussion. A question, Professor Moore, she began, can you prove the existence of the external world? This question had been the subject of philosophical debate for centuries, and many great minds had grappled with it. Moore, always delighted by intellectual challenges, took a moment to consider. He then raised his right hand and firmly declared, I can prove the existence of the external world. He tapped the table with his hand, saying, here is one hand. Alice, unfazed by his response, continued her inquiry. But, Professor Moore, 
how can you be sure that there isn't another hand behind your back? With a subtle smile, Moore raised his left hand from behind his back, placing it next to his right, and said but, Professor Moore, how can you be sure that there isn't another hand behind your back? The room fell silent as the weight of Moore's argument sank in. He had used the most basic and common sense approach to demonstrate the existence of the external world. Moore's famous, here is one hand, and here is another, became a classic example of how to approach philosophical questions with simplicity and precision. This encounter with Alice would go down in history as one of the most iconic moments in the annals of philosophy. Moore's engaging response demonstrated that even the most complex and abstract philosophical questions could be tackled with clarity, common sense, and a touch of wit. As the years passed, George Edward Moore continued to inspire generations of philosophers with his engaging style and thought-provoking ideas. His legacy extended beyond the walls of academia, influencing the broader public and challenging them to question the nature of reality and knowledge. Today, Moore's work and engaging storytelling continue to captivate and enlighten those who seek to explore the mysteries of the human mind and the world around us. His profound insights into ethics, epistemology, and metaphysics, combined with his simple and engaging approach to complex questions, remain a testament to the enduring power of philosophy to enrich our understanding of the world. And that, dear viewers, brings us to the conclusion of our journey through the captivating life of George Edward Moore. His legacy as a philosopher, storyteller, and advocate for common sense continues to inspire and enlighten those who seek to understand the mysteries of the human experience. We want to express our deepest gratitude for joining us on this adventure. If you enjoyed this story, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more engaging tales. We'd also love to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. Keep exploring, keep seeking knowledge, and keep sharing these stories that enrich our understanding of the world. Until our next journey together, take care.